Alternative wind condition. With Janelle and Will. Hello and welcome back to Alternate Wind Condition. I am Janelle, and with me is my co-host, Will. Um, okay, so lesson learned this past weekend that if you are drafting, for the love of God, take the foil tarmac <laughs> <laughs> and we will get into that in a bit, but first we're going to tell you about our show news, which is that we lost episode 8. And that's why this show seems like it's taken forever to get out. <laughs> yeah, it was like, well, I, was, I mean, it's actually a, a mix of a couple things. Is one, we, we've we been having different things going on. Um, I know uh, you had a, uh, a funeral, uh, your friends, and I actually was going through some health issues during that time frame as well, so... But yes, episode 8 is missing. If you go looking for episode 8, it's gone. It's never going to exist. I don't know what's wrong with my file, but whatever it is, Dropbox won't take it. So I give up. I quit. I'm done with episode 8. Yep. And, and you don't get to hear me curse out people about uh, hygiene issues. It was really great. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. But it's gone. It's gone forever and ever and ever. So with that said, we're going to get into the news first. And we're going to yep. talk about August's Fry FNM promo, which is Serum Serum Visions. Serum Visions, yes. Uh, now, uh, uh, shit, I picked up the wrong screenshot. My bad. No picture for you, YouTube. Right. No well, picture okay. for you. And I, I actually think this was on, this may have been on the lost episode, so we'll kind of go over it really quickly again. Um, they announced the uh, June, July, and August FNM promos, but the big thing is the July and August promos are actually going to be modern cards, not standard cards. Um, the July promo is Path to Exile, um, which is one of the premier removal spells. Then in August, after the after the Modern Masters promo came, uh, Modern Masters officially came out and all the spoilers, everyone was like, well, "Where is Serum Visions?" Because Serum Visions needed to be reprinted. Um, <laughs> Well, the reason why is because Serum Visions is the August FNM promo. Now, I, I'm, I'm well, happy if, to... Re- before we get into what it does, uh, or what you, why you want to talk about it, rather, for those of you who don't play Modern like me, Serum Visions is a one blue sorcery draw card scry two. Yeah. Since there's it's no like, picture, that's what it does. Yeah, so. and it's considered probably what I would consider the premier card drawing spell in Modern, just because... Modern doesn't, even though they're in modern legal sets, you don't have access to uh, Ponder or Preordain, which are legacy cards. Um, they banned them because they said it was too ubiquitous. All the blue decks are playing it. It was making it too powerful. So the best we have is Serum Visions. Um, incredibly powerful card. Now, th- there's two things I want to bring up about it. Um, one, Wizards, I know what you're doing. It's it's not Bukaki Visions. <laughs> it's like, oh, about the, the picture about the worst art in the oh world. Oh my god. Okay, so again, there's no picture. So, the new Serum Visions image is this woman, and she's got these those glowy blue eyes, no pupil, and this weird hat on her head. And there's yes. all these like, I looked at them and I thought that she was like m- lifting quicksilver metal with her mind. But if you're sick like Will, it also uh, looks and, and, a lot and, like tentacles coming at say, her face. No, 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 not tentacles. That's semen. That is, that is. That's, that's what kind. I said, coming <laughs> at her like, face. And by the way, I was not the first one to notice this because I saw someone did a, um, did a Photoshop of the picture, and they put the uh, uh, brasiers. I guess it's like a major porn site or something like that in the bottom, in the bottom uh, right hand corner. And I was like, oh my god. When I, after I saw that, I was like, oh shit. And <laughs> yep, she does have ex- this expression like that is either I'm concentrating or oh my god, what is about to happen? <laughs> it could be either. So it may be the most inappropriate vi- picture probably in a while. Only if you're sick. Only if you're sick. Oh my lord. Uh, no, no. I, 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 I didn't it, see it. I didn't it, see it and I'm pretty bad. Alright? I did not right. see that. Yeah, I think any any okay. I don't know. It may it may just be a perverted person thing. But, <laughs> um, I was like, I mean, clearly looking at it, I was just like, really, really, is this, is this what y'all came up with? Was 
Bukaki. Uh oh. Apparently it is. So congratulations, Blizzard. All right, so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get right into what we did this week. Magic the Gathering. Get the cards. Play the game. Hope to win. But as we all know, it's not about winning. Draft. Commander. Trading. Legacy. Modern. Standard. Tilt. Table flip. This week in magic starts now. What were you up to this past month, Will? Okay. Well, so a short version of what happened last month. month. All right. Well, since the last episode, um, really, honestly, I haven't been doing a whole lot. Is I, I um, mentioned I had some health issues. I actually had a gallbladder infection that uh, kind of kept me from blogging and everything else for a while, but. Oh, that sounds uh, awful. Yeah, uh, it's called uh, cholecystitis. It's, it's not gallstones, but it's maybe something down the road, maybe indicative of gallstones, but not. Oh. I didn't have it, thankfully. So, because that would have been surgery and everything else. So, um, but beyond that, um, mostly just been playing, uh, uh, practicing on my decks and everything. I finally sleeved up and started playing some Esper Dragons. Cool. Um,. It's a really good deck. I don't know if it's a really good deck right now. Um, because it seems like it's the deck that everybody is targeting. And yeah, Esper Dragon's kind of wrecks face. Yeah, it does. And so, um... Qualifier. Um, ended up going, I I'm think, two and three again. with it. You gotta... I said Rex face, and then we lost everything you were saying. Oh, sorry. Um... Uh, I played the Invitational Qualifier and it ended up going 2-3 and three with it. So, not terrible, but, I mean, definitely not a great record. Uh, definitely didn't make top 8. Um, we can't however, have that now. You're playing S for Dragons. Yeah. It's like... Uh, however... Uh, what are what deck, are people pulling out against you? Uh, let's see. I, I think the big thing is uh, Abzan has started going a little bit more controlling route, and so they're not they're not automatically playing Siege Rhinos on turn four. Because, yeah. I mean, honestly, if I was on the play and they played Siege Rhino turn four, my next turn is going to be, okay, Dragon Lord Edgetai, turn five. Um, your thing yeah, hits for four. Your thing hits for four. Mine hits for five. Let's see who wins this race. Plus, I'm anticipating every turn, so I'm going to – I have an inerrant card advantage. Mm -hmm. So, um, they, they went into a more controlling build now, um, so they're willing to wait to you know heroes downfall my dragon and then play their game so yeah uh, it, it, it's not a nice uh environment however i have found a place that i really 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 love dragon lord Ojitai, and believe it or not it's modern um right. I, I i have gone away from my grixis twin playing tassiker um and i have moved to jeskai twin playing dragon lord Ojitai. And he is almost, it almost feels like he's cheating sometimes because <laughs> it, it, it's bad enough that I have the twin combo that I can pull out at pretty much any time. I mean, like, if you tap out, chances are I can probably combo you out. It's game over. However, at the same time, if you're so focused on killing uh, a Splinter Twin combo, then you're going to you're going to be dry by the time I get to turn five or turn six, and I can just land Dragon Lord every time and be like, "Okay, well you can't you can't hit it until next turn anyway." So, so I'm going to be a jerk for the moment. Yeah, you yeah, go, but, go. <laughs> and then when I get to untap, you know, with at least five mana open, I could have a cryptic command in hand or something like that, and it it's, it just gets really difficult for them after that. It's like and so. I, I really like it. I'm actually running it main deck um, in my twin deck. I it's sort of it's sort of what I like to, it's sort of a hybrid of a Jeskai control deck and Jeskai twin and uh, uh, Splinter Twin because I'm still running stuff like Celestial Colonnades um, in my land that activate they become four four flying creatures with vigilance. So it, it's sort of that same type of controlling build. But it just happens to have the Splinter Twin combo in it, and I really like it a lot. Um, yeah, it's kind of kind of Rex's face. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Why it would really you not does. like it? Um, 
Uh, let's see. Some of the other highlights uh, since our last episode. Um, I It's bad. I've been at Star City here in Roanoke for about almost nine months now. And I have never actually played against any of the quote-unquote team Star City pros. Uh, Brad Nelson, Chris Van Meter, Todd Anderson, Brian Braun, Ryan Braun to win. Uh, Why is will, that? Uh, well, I was like... Part of it is because they do travel around with the Open Series, and so uh, the big tournaments that are on the weekends, typically they're not there. Oh, that makes sense. However, there was also a, a pretty big gap in the past month where they were kind of on the West Coast, like in Portland, Oregon, and stuff like that, so they didn't get to travel. Mm -hmm. So in the, in the past, since the past episode, um, in a Legacy Invitational Qualifier, I finally got to play Chris Van Meter. Um, he Did was you playing win? Um, no. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Uh, he was playing Omnitel against my Stoneblade deck, and it, it wasn't... Game one was probably closer, um, but he was able to get Omniscience out, and once I'm, if you don't know what Omniscience does, it's a 10-mana um, enchantment that says basically you can cast all your spells in your hand without paying their mana cost. It's the go-fuck-yourself spell. Pretty much, pretty much. And so, um, so yeah, he's casting, you know, Dig Through Times for free, and he was able to find his combo pieces and everything else. Um, game two, he had the nut draw. There was just nothing. I mean, literally, there was nothing I could have done. I, when he cast Show and Tell, I threw down a true name nemesis. He threw down an omniscience and immediately cast Emrakul for free. Again, by the way. Um, he liked so, you, man. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he was like, yeah, it, it was not close. However, uh, the one that I, I really enjoyed playing is, um, and it was actually at, at Friday Night Magic, of all places, believe it or not, um, was during round four a couple weeks ago, I actually got to play Brad Nelson um, at, at, at Friday Night Magic. And oh, it, was wow. an Esper, it was an Esper Dragon's Mirror. I think he was just trying to get some prep in for the Invitational that's this weekend, which unfortunately, uh, after talking with my wife, I don't think I'm actually going to be able to make it to, but hopefully I'm going to go to GP Charlotte next weekend. Cool. Um, uh, at least you get to do one. Yeah, at least you get to do one of them. So. Um, and... It, just seeing, because I mean, he is a he, he is a platinum level pro. I mean, he's he's won Grand Prix. He's won. I mean, honestly, I think he's probably in the running right now to possibly make it to Worlds this year, um, with all his uh, Grand Prix top eights and everything else. This is is probably the best player in the area, and I mean, not even not even remotely close. And he kicked your ass. Yeah, he did. It's like in two games now. I will say game one was probably closer than he wanted to be because, again, we were playing Esper Dragon's Mirror, so a lot of it was, all right, land, go, land, go, land, go. <laughs> okay, yeah, end of your turn, I'll try to dig through time. Uh, I'll dig through time myself in response, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we actually almost got to the point where we were gonna, one of us was going to deck the other person. Um, he, was oh. down to ten, he was down to 10 cards. I was down to 15 cards in my library. So that's about as close as I can say, okay, I almost got there. You know, if the turn game would have gone on for 11 more turns. It didn't. <laughs> That's about yeah. as close as I can say. And then uh, game two, just not even close. It was, like, it, it was just... It, it was amazing to see the way... And it's a mindset that I guess I need to probably work on and stuff like that. Is He was patient. I mean, he was incredibly patient. When I finally thought seized him, I think on turn like eight or nine of the game his hand was all gas it, it was counter spells it was dragon lord ojitai it was foul tongue invocation heroes mm -hmm. downfalls it's like so i was like i looked at it's like okay what do i take here like because there's no good option he was able to craft his hand perfectly to play against my deck and it was just something like okay if i could if i could do that every single game it would be amazing, but um, but I did get to ask him after the fact that I said, hey, you know, um, was there any major glaring errors? One one error I knew he was going to tell me about, I picked up on my own immediately because uh, I had my three islands out already, and I cracked a fetch land. Uh, I cracked my flooded stream, which there's no planes in my deck, only islands. So I um, oh. completely lost my land there. Yeah. Uh, then the other thing was, he said, I think game one, I thought seized on like turn three. He said that's way too early on this deck. Is you don't thought seize early, you thought seize late. 
That makes sense. To, because uh, uh, well, especially, especially in the mirror match, especially in the mirror match, because you want to you want to rip your opponent's hand apart. Essentially, is like yeah, and with um, all the draw, they're so, just gonna fix that, it. Yeah, it's like so. Yeah, I mean, those were kind of the, really the last highlight for me was honestly, um, I got a box of Modern Masters 2015. Uh, did you win it or did you just get one? No, I no, I bought it. Oh, cool. I bought it. Did you get anything good? I did actually. Um, in the first five packs of the Modern Masters box that I opened, I got a line, uh, Leyline of Sanctity. Nice. Uh, Karn Liberated. Um, uh, what was the other two biggies? There were two other big ones. One of them I know was Tarmogoyf. That that was the biggie in the first five packs. Ooh. And then, um, oh, Cryptic Command. Nice. So, and then uh, in the rest of the box there was still a Dark Confidant. Um, a blink moth nexus and something else. I forgot what it was. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. I'll, I'm sure I'll remember it sometime down the road. But um, so yeah. Overall, I ended up getting three mythics in the box. So I was like, okay, you know, and, and a 24 pack uh, booster box. That, that's that's acceptable. I can do that. So, um, and I drafted a bunch of the initial weekend, and now nobody wants to draft it again. <laughs> yeah. It's over. So. Um. Well, I can't remember what I was up to because it's been so long. So. <laughs> it was like, alrighty. I was like, well, um, speaking of, I guess that sort of leads in perfectly to Modern Masters because we have two big topic of discussions for Modern yeah, Masters. It does. Yeah, we're starting off with talking about the two issues with Modern Masters. And um, I've been hearing nothing but bad things. Nothing I but think- bad things. My well, see, store I down be- here opened like too many boxes, and they're positive they will never make, they will never break even selling the cards individually. And, and that's like, ridiculous. That is ridiculous. I, I, to a, I mean, I can understand to a point of, you know, uh, I was one of the defenders of Modern Masters when the entire set came out. I was like, you know what? Okay. Yeah, they reprinted some cards they needed to. But they were really trying to focus on the set as a drafting set. And in terms of drafting, I loved drafting Modern Masters. I've actually done about five drafts on Magic Online just because I like drafting the set that much. Um, however, if you are hoping to get value from Modern Masters, you're going to be very disappointed. Yeah, you're playing the Tarmogoyf Foil Lottery. Pretty much. And um, you get one of those, you'll make more than your money bag. You don't get one of those, and good fucking luck. Well, see, I mean, well, I calculated from the box the the money uh, rares and mythics that I got from my box. Uh, the box cost me two hundred and forty dollars. I ended up making three hundred and thirty dollars, so I made a profit. But again, that's one box. Not every box is going to be that lucky, or you know, be able to have that kind of value. So, if I'm on the good side of the spectrum, I would hate to see what the bad side of that spectrum is. It is yeah. like, um, there was, I saw talks on the on Twitter about some of the boxes only had one mythic in the entire box, which, at a, in a thing that has 24 packs of cards and 15 mythics in the set, you should probably at least get two, I would think. Two should be a bare minimum. You'd think... Yeah, some of those mythics are pretty bad, though. Okay, yeah, Comet Storm is bad, and I know. I mean, I know why. It's, I understand why it's mythic, and I understand why people are upset that it's mythic. Because if you're drafting the set, I don't want Comet Storm at rare. I don't. It's yeah. like because it's way too powerful of an effect that I don't want to have to deal with on a regular basis. However, if you're again, if you're going more along the value perspective. But yeah, I can see where I would be completely pissed if I opened a uh, Comet Storm. That being said, I did buy a Comet Storm to replace the good rares in my box so that if anybody wants to draft it down the road, I have a complete box ready to draft. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> but again, I, I can understand the issue with that. However, the thing that sort of makes this whole value discussion even a little bit worse overall is because this set actually had some pretty big printing issues. Like um, what? What I didn't hear any about well, any of this. I say, well, there were a couple of different things. Um, one, we're saying that there was uh, really bad uh, miscolorations on some of the cards, stuff like that. However, the biggest complaint of everything that I've heard about it was 
the new recyclable cardboard packaging. Mm -hmm. Apparently, because of the way that the packaging was made, it was actually making some of the cards come out in not even near mint condition. Like they were coming out of the pack almost like slightly played or even in some worst case scenarios, uh, mildly played hmm. or medium played, I guess is the MP. But so there was a lot of complaining that because of this new packaging, which I mean, I appreciate what Watsi was trying to do with the packaging to make it, you know, more environmentally friendly and everything else. However, if you start doing it at the cost of your quality, which they seem to do, which they seem to did do on this one, that's an issue. That's a really, really big issue. Um, and so, unfortunately, I, I, looking at the set of oh, 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 am I pleased with the set personally? Yes, I was very happy that I ended up getting a box of Modern Masters too. But again, for every one of me, there may be two or three who did not. Yeah, give that and value. Most of the packs weren't giving value. No, it's like, and especially considering that they did increase the price up to what I think the retail I think is ten. I know for a fact the Star City is selling for eleven ninety nine. So they of course because they have to make a profit on it itself. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. So, I I think. I think the value is not going to be there. And unfortunately, what's going to end up happening, I know we talked about this when we initially talked about the reasonings behind Modern Masters being printed in the first place, mm -hmm. was we said that one of the goals was possibly to bring down the price of these modern staples, like Tarmogoyf, Dark Confidant, yeah. um, stuff like that. I think, unfortunately, what's going to happen with this now that we're seeing the value not being there, the issues that have occurred, I, I think one of two things will occur. Either A, the prices will not come down. In fact, they will continue to stay, hold steady or even go up. Or B, and I actually saw this somewhere on, Twitter, somewhere on Twitter, so I wish I knew who to credit with this, but I don't know, is there will be kind of two tiers. There will be the non-Modern Masters 2 tier and the Modern Masters 2 tier. Mm -hmm. Is because the quality is supposedly that much less that the Modern Masters 2 tier will be cheaper than the non-Modern Masters too cheap. So that there is a tier where people can get the cards cheaper, but it's not going to be as high quality as what the non-Modern Masters 2 are. Yeah. I personally I personally think is what's going to end up happening is the, especially with the Mythics of the set, the price will come down a little bit consider, to begin with. For example, Tarmogoyf right now is sitting at $150, I think. Mm -hmm. the, um, middle price. Didn't really go I down guess. much. It didn't go down as much as everybody was hoping. I mean, I was personally hoping that after the uh, uh, three or technically four Grand Prix from this past weekend uh, with people playing Modern Masters, I was hoping for a hundred dollar Now, yeah. it, Now, admittedly, it may not have gotten into the circulation yet to get that to get to that price, so it may still be there, but it hasn't yet. And so, unfortunately, I'm probably going to be holding off on getting a play set of Tarmogoyf, but I do have one, so. I'm one fourth of the way there, um, <laughs> but I, I'm not expecting the actual price to come down that much. Uh, it, we come, I would say, a year from now, if it's below 175, I'll be shocked. Yeah, it it's like, it's just disappointing. The it purpose is. of, I mean, there are no good swords in the the any of the in the fuck set in the set. There are no swords in the set. There, I mean, not all the mythic rares are good. Like, it's just... I'm going to say, I mean, admittedly, I, I, I really only think one of the Mythic Rares is bad. I think that's common still. Uh, the other ones, I would have been happy, I think, because I think all the other ones tend to be 15 to $20, or $15 up, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I would probably be happy with opening any of the other Mythics. But, um, but yeah, if you got Comet Storm, then yeah, I could understand we see where you would be pissed. Yeah. So... So, well, um, the other issue we are going to be talking to you guys about, uh, besides Blizzard doing silly things with their game, is Blizzard. Blizzard. Uh, whoa, whoa! It was like <laughs> wrong game. My wrong game. bad. All right. I say, what podcast no. am I on? No. Well, Lassie, Lassie <laughs> should be looking to Hearthstone for advice. I'll, I'll go ahead and throw that out there. No, <laughs> no, no! Take it back. Take it back. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm sorry. In terms no. of a digital, in terms of a digital product, uh, 
Well, in yeah. a digital product, yeah, oh, but yeah. oh my no, god. No. Oh, you no, can't no, act on your opponent's turn. No, 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 oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, let me clarify that. I'm talking about Magic Online. I, if, if, <laughs> if, 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 if Wazzy took Blizzard's advice on Magic Online, it would be a much better place. Now, I don't want to play Hearthstone in actual, even paper magic. No, I don't want to do that. I okay, do yeah. not want to do that. <laughs> okay, all right. But in terms of digital product, yeah. Well, now that you've taken it back, and I can okay. relax. <laughs> all right, it's like, sorry, I was not mean to call magic as a whole inferior game. I was calling magic online an inferior game. And that's very <laughs> true. Everybody knows difference. it's true. All right, so, so what we're going to talk about next is GP Las Vegas and Goyf Gate, which I only heard very vaguely about so go ahead and tell us what's going on there okay well um as you know the um uh to kind of celebrate modern masters 2 being released there was actually technically three gps uh this past weekend one was in asia one was in europe and one was in las vegas for north america uh las vegas actually was so big they ended up getting i think seven thousand some odd people so they actually had to split it into two different GPs oh, wow. with, a different top, with a different top eight and everything else. It was by far the largest magic event in the history of, of the game. So Amazing. Okay, let's say continue. Bra bravo, bravo on that. Now, let's get to where the controversy was. Um, the controversy actually was in one of the two GPs at Grand Prix Las Vegas. Um, there is a, uh, a player uh, by the name of Pascal Menard. Um, kind of, I, I would say, I don't know if I'd call him a magic pro, but I definitely call him one of the better magic players. Okay. Um, out there. Um, but he is definitely, he has definitely been growing. He's done very, very well in the past few GPs and stuff like that. But the way that when you have a, what's called considered a limited GP, the way that it traditionally works is day oh, one, okay. day one of day one of the GP is uh, you get a steel pool, you build it, you play for nine rounds. Uh, kind of the way traditional way you would do kind of any GP. Okay. However, the second day is actually very unique because it's a total of six remaining rounds plus the top eight, which is technically three rounds. So what you do is you have your first draft at the beginning of the day for the first three rounds. You have a second draft for the next three rounds, and then the top eight have their own draft. Oh, you mean limited as in format, not yeah, limit limited format. Yeah, oh, limited format. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. The top eight, it was down to the top eight. Pascal Menard made the top eight of one of the two Grand Prix Las Vegas GPs. And uh, in pack one, he uh, he built what I would say is probably in the draft he built a kind of a red-white, I think they were calling it red-white double strike deck. It's very heavy on uh, really good equipment, stuff like that, to just kind of kind of an aggro deck to end the game really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. In pack two, his... Foil rare was a Tarmogoyf. Now, yep. now traditionally in in a draft, the way that a draft works is pack one kind of sets the tone for your entire draft. Is you kind of get get into kind of what you think is the open archetype, and then pack two and pack three you just continue to build on it. Now, traditionally, if this was if it was not a foil Tarmogoyf, or if it, for some reason if they said, like, okay, you don't get to keep the cards at the end of this. Uh-huh. I don't think he would have taken the foil Tarmogoyf. I don't. Well, right, yeah. However, practically, let's be honest, it's a foil fucking Tarmogoyf. Everybody's going to take the foil Tarmogoyf. That's how drafting works, yeah. It's like, I mean, it, it, in, a, in a store, I can understand that. And, I mean, and in a Grand Prix... Yeah, I, I understand. It's a bigger stage. But at the same time, people are people. You know? I don't take... see anything wrong with it. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, so uh, the first pack had the second thing. He ended up t he ended up taking a foil Tarmogoyf and passing a Burst Lightning. Now, Burst Lightning is basically a shock unless you pay uh, a kicker of four additional mana, and then it does four damage. Um, so two okay. damage for one, one uh, thing. But he ended up taking the foil Tarmogoyf. After this, and after the Grand Prix was over, there were a lot of pros who came out and just was ripping him a new one for what a horrible pick that was. He was only he was rare drafting, as they call it, you know, yeah. as he was just trying to take the things that cost money in the finals of a Grand Prix. Did he win? Tell me if he won. No, he did not win. Okay. Um, in, in fact, actually, sort of ironically, 
he ended up losing, I think, to someone burning him out with a burst light. <laughs> Um, I hope it however, was lightning. Moving on. However, a lot of people would come to his defenses and be like, okay, you know what? Not every pro is exactly the same. Like, not every pro has a channel fireball or a, you know, yeah. name, name it. That, I mean, literally pays for them to do a lot of the traveling and pays for them to get cards for their decks and stuff like that. So it's, it's not like, you know, it's not like every person in the world has that backing. To where they can be like, oh, four old time growth. Well, that's not really good for my deck. I think I'll just pass it. Yeah, that's not. And so, thing. practically, I it's something that I've been thinking about personally myself. And it's like, okay, you know, if I was in the finals of a Grand Prix, would I do this? Um, I don't think I could pass the four old time growth. In fact, I actually would? think. I, I say, I, in fact, I actually think I would be bragging about it. I would probably draft it face up and say, hey, look at this sweet card that I got right here. You know. <laughs> It's like, I don't think I could do that. It's like, and I completely understand where you come from. Now, if you're talking just... In my opinion, I think anybody who is saying, oh, I would never pick up that foiled Darmagoyf that's $500, they've clearly never drafted a $500 card. Well, no, I mean, and these people have drafted $500 cards. However... Um, and and have passed them? I don't know about that. But, but at the same time, though, these are... These are pros who are, you know, Hall of Famers who, you know, literally get paid five hundred dollars just for showing up, two hundred fifty to five hundred dollars just for showing up at a Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, so yeah, you know what? I bet they really don't give two shits about a foil charm and goyf because they get two hundred fifty dollars just for showing up. <laughs> it's like, but for the average Magic player, I don't think that's I don't think that's the case. Is like I think most of the people would have taken the foil charm and goyf in a heartbeat. Absolutely. As um, like, however, the the best part of the story, the the really best part of this entire story, is what has occurred within the past probably twenty four hours from this recording. Uh, Pascal. Uh, this Pascal is the Menard, part I heard about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, Pascal Menard uh, actually took the full Tarmogoyf, and now something else that you also have to know about kind of limited grand prix and stuff like that is to make sure that nobody's adding additional cards to their draft pool. Uh, they have a special stamp that they put on each card to, si to signify, hey, this is one of the cards in the they've draft. They've pre-opened all the packs, and they've stamped them. Yeah, they stamped them. Yes, yeah. They open them, they approve them. And, well, actually, let me get back to the foil thing in a second. But, um, but they stamp them. And you can clearly see, he actually posted it on eBay. It has the little stamping. Uh, and here's right the picture in, if you're on YouTube. Uh, he has the little stamping there in the kind of middle right hand side of the picture it's right below the set symbol yep and so it signifies this is an actual foil tarmogoy from the thing um he put it on ebay and he said uh he's gonna take half of the proceeds from it the other half he's donating to charity um Aww. and the charity yeah and the other the charity is gamers helping gamers there's actually <laughs> um yep and so currently this $500 goyf that, it, I mean, if you open a pack yourself and you open up a foil charmer goyf, you have a $500 card in your hand. This card is currently sitting at $12,000 with six days and seven hours left to go. 89 people bidding on that sucker. Yeah. Now, at the same time, I do I think these are all legitimate bids? I, I don't think so. In fact, actually, I, I'm looking at the bidding history right now. There was... A bid of sixty nine hundred dollars. Then the next bid after that jumped up to ninety five, uh, uh, ninety five hundred dollars. Um, so I think that's probably where if there was a fake bid coming in, I think that's where the fake bid started. Probably, um, yeah. Because it, it jumped up over three thousand in a single bid. So it's like, but I mean, the fact of the matter is, uh, even if it doesn't end up, even if it only ends up at seven thousand dollars. Uh, I think he gets the fifth through eight prize pool in GP Vegas, so he got a thousand dollars there. Plus, split the seven thousand to thirty five hundred for charity, thirty five hundred for himself. So forty five hundred dollars for picking a foil Tarmogoyf. That's so, really good. That's really good. That's incredibly good. And I mean, and to add on top of it, I actually think it's still going to go a legitimate bid. It's actually going to go further than that. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if the actual, actual legitimate bid ends up being above ten thousand, which means 
after you can take away the half for charity, he's actually going to end up making more money than the person who won Grand Prix Las Vegas. Yeah, I think or it is... I should, I was, technically, I should say the two people who won Grand Prix Las Vegas, one for each team. But... And that's why it's so ridiculous to tell someone, don't pull. Well, say, well I, I think there's a, an important discussion that needs to happen here, and I, I hope this is something that um, Wizards really takes a look at. If you win a, you know, a, if you're one of two winners out of a 7,000 person Grand Prix, $5,000 just does not seem like an adequate prize money. Especially considering, and I, I mean, I, I hate to use this as comparison, but look at like League of Legends and mm -hmm. these other things that have multi million dollar purses for the winners. Well, right, they have multi million dollar purses, but those were also mostly sponsored by the people watching. Well, I, I agree. And as I, I mean, yes, no Magic event gets the same numbers as, you know, the League of Legends Championship Series or whatever else. Yeah. But I feel, but I feel like there's still, there's still a discrepancy there. I, and, I, and I don't know exactly what the answer is because $5,000 is the exact same thing that somebody in a Star City Games Open gets every weekend. Mm -hmm. and That's true. GP, and GPs are considered kind of the next step up from the Star City Open Series for better or worse, uh, depending on your perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I actually put them probably a little more on the exact same level, but again, that's just me. Um, so, even though I do agree the competition tends to be a little bit harder, but the fact of the matter is, I, I, I think this says something that, you know, a card that gets in a controversy is going to end up netting this guy more money than if he had actually won the actual Grand Prix itself. I don't and, think that it's sh it's something they should take into account because it's a that's a well, okay. yeah, and there's okay. that's so rare to have a card that's worth that much. Well, see, well, and, well, and that's the second consideration behind it too, is having a card uh, having a foil of a card unless it's on the reserve list, and the reserve list I can understand because they're never going to print those off. There are cards on the reserve list that a non foil cost seven hundred something dollars, mm -hmm. or if you go to um, like right, the but they're not drafting the those. Time. Yeah, but they're not drafting those. Yeah, and it's not in a current set. And we're never going to see those cards again reprinted unless they do away with the uh, reserve list. Yes. Which is not going to happen. So, they need to do something to make sure these cards do not get that insanely out of control. <laughs> it's I like, don't agree. It's like, but I mean, the fact of the matter is, it's it, if the card costs thirty dollars versus you know a foil five hundred dollar card, do you think the draft pick would have been the same? I don't think it matters because we're not talking about. Okay, we're talking about a format where part of what happens in the format is people pull rares. Like I get that if you're talking strictly about the game, that that might piss you off a little bit, but that's the way right. drafting works. You get well, to rare draft it. You're the people next to you are doing it. The people across from you are doing it. That's what you go to. That's just how it works. Hold on, I'm not done yet. All right. All right? Yeah. So you're starting off with a format where that's where it happens. Second off, you're doing a rare, and by that I mean f infrequently occurring event with a modern set. That doesn't happen very often. The reason that set was released in the first place is to reduce the price of some cards. What's never going to happen is having the reduced price of the foils. Right. That's okay. not going to be a thing. So we're talking no. about one card in the entire set that, if it is foil, gets an ass load of money. And then we're talking about one guy who decided to don't... To, who realized, I'm sorry, that this would be a card people would want to buy. And then he also realized that he could donate to charity for it. Now, is that something Wizards could take into into account? No, because how often is that fucking going to happen? Well, say, you should and, not make a rule for something that's rare. Well, say, well, and see, that that gets to the one thing overall that kind of grinds me a little bit wrong about this whole situation, is that I, I, I'm not saying... Here, here's what I'm saying. Is in a traditional limited GP, 
when you get to day two where you're drafting. Now, of course, day one sealed pools, you can't help what people pull. People are going to pull foil rares and everything else. Mm -hmm. However, to kind of maintain a little bit more consistency and to make sure that someone is not foil rare drafting a Tarmogoyf, in most limited GPs, they actually take the foils out and replace them with other cards. Yeah, and then who uh, gets those foils? See, Wizards holds on to them. The, nobody gets them. Bullshit. It's like, it's like, well, I mean, they may turn around and sell them to somebody, but... That's my it, point. So why does Wizards get them over the people who are in the tournament bringing people to see, who are playing, who are actually putting in the effort, going home, spending hours of their fucking lives, learning how to draft and build decks and testing, and bec the... The people who are there are not here to see a wizard judge. I'm sorry. They're not here to see the commenters. Maybe a couple people. They're here to see people play the game. Those right. are the people who deserve the cards. I agree. As I, and I mean, I, I think you either have to either set a just a strict rule that says, okay, when you get to the drafting portion and a GP, either say you don't get any of the cards or... People shouldn't complain about this. <laughs> like, I mean, even even on Magic Online, they have what's called Phantom Drafts. Is you pay a certain amount of quote unquote Phantom points, you draft, you don't get to keep the cards, but you still get a prize at the end. That's As like, I don't know if I like that. That's weird. As I, but and uh, it, the other thing with this is, one, I was sort of disheartened by how the pros, the people who are kind of the really big pros uh, handled it. But the other, the other thing is, though, the more I thought about it, it's like, all right, if this was pack one, pick one, would they have complained to the same amount? No, it's like, they would have been oh. like, oh, that's an amazing pick. It's like, holy shit, shut up. You didn't get the pack. It's like, yeah, it's like, I mean, that if that was a pack one, pick one, and he was not in the red-white, <coughs> excuse me, if he was not in the red-white archetype, and his first pick was Tarmogoyf, or if he was in any other, like, the most popular archetype from the weekend was probably green-white tokens from the draft set. If he was in green-white tokens, would he, they have complained about a Tarmogoyf pick on no, pack two? Pick one? No, because he's, he's in green. The only reason they complained about it is because it was not the quote-unquote strategic, strategic right decision. Yeah. It's like, and it's, yes, I and I agree. It's like, if if it was a strategic decision, then no, that would not have been the right pick. But practically, yes, it was the, It was perfectly fine to take that pick. And so I, I wish Wizards would bring the prices of some of these things down even more. I don't think Modern Masters 2, as I mentioned before, I don't think Modern Masters 2 is going to bring the price down to where they want it to be at. No, I, think I don't if, think so. I think if Tarmogoyf was at $100, I think they would be ecstatic. Yeah, but I still think if Tarmogoyf was at 100 the foil would still be near 500 and well, that's, that's, be, what, yes. that's what yeah, you come down to Absolutely. in this All case right. is that fucking foil is still going to be an ass ton of money and sane people would not turn it down insane people turn that kind of money down well, say, well insane people who you know no, don't, no, no, even, no, 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 no. don't even pay for their own well, no 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 no, no. it is still $500 that's still taking your girl out on a really nice date that's $500. Okay. <laughs> but if it's one thing, I guess, it, I agree with you. I think, it, I don't care who it was, I would have never questioned anybody taking that pick. I mean, I never would have questioned taking a foil Tarmogoyf. I don't care if it's pack three, pack one, and you have enough cards already to completely build your deck already. I don't care. I'm not going to, I'm not going to slam anybody for taking Tarmogoyf, a uh, foil Tarmogoyf. I'm not going to do it. Mm-mm. It's Maybe like, if it was a regular priced one, I could see why people would be complaining. It's not even a, 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 a non-foil. That's what I meant. I was saying, and, and, actually, and actually, people who talked to uh, uh, Pascal Bernard on Twitter, and they asked him, like, hey, all right, if this was a non-foil Tarmogoyf, would you have taken it? And he said no. No, he would not have taken a non-foil Tarmogoyf, uh, pack two, pick one, if it was non-foil. He went out taking the top away. And I think that's perfectly reasonable because there's a big difference between $150 and $500. Yeah. Like, and that's difference. what I'm saying, you know? It's like... $500. I mean, the crazy thing is, unfortunately, he was just the person that 
Wizards picked to focus on during the draft. It's yeah. Like, it's Who like, else got one that we don't know about? The other, other six seats besides the two people that they covered? Yeah. It's like, no one would have even known. Good for him. This, nobody would even be talking about it if he was one of the other six seats. It just happened to be he was the one that was picked for to be focused on while the draft was occurring. And yes, he did this. And it's a decision that strategically, was it right? Probably not. Practically, was it right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, I think, you know, people saying it's like, oh, he discredited himself as a as a professional magic player. Like, well, I we, think we're we're beating a dead horse about this point. You know, some people are too. being silly, and you know, fuck them. As I and I, I really hope I, I would really hope this target with the legitimate bid after all is said and done. I wanted to be where it is right now. I wanted to be at twelve thousand dollars. I would love for him to get six thousand dollars out of this, with all the crap that he's had to put up with. The past yeah, few. get as much money as you can, man. Like seriously. It's like, and I mean, it's funny the the entire weekend, the hashtag that Wizards was using for this big weekend was. Uh, make magic history. Well, guess what? It happened. <laughs> it's like it, they, he he did something that is going to almost be kind of one of those stories that people pass down and tell. Like, like you know, when the, when the one guy ripped up the chaos card that orb. blew up the board, the chaos orb. Yeah, yeah. It's like everybody I mean, it's knows that be, story. It's going to be a story that's going to be passed down. It's going to be told for God knows how long. I mean, chaos orb was what probably fifteen years ago in Magic, at least. And I say people still talk about, you know, what this one person did was he kind of bent the rules and he just tore up his chaos orb and threw it into the air. And, and they had to make a rule about it. And they had to make a rule about it because there was no rule. And he ended up winning the match because there was no rule against this. <laughs> it's like, those are those are just kind of the stories that kind of get passed on from, I don't yeah. want to say generation to generation because the game hasn't been around that long. But from and, older you know, players, older players to newer players to... Maybe it'll happen next time they do a modern master set, but you know, is it real? When the fuck is that going to be? You know. I say, well, every, everybody I see online seems to think it's going to be 2017. I personally think it's going to be 2016. That seems, yeah, that seems like right around the corner. Is like it does. When, it, how it, long it, between the last one and this one? Wasn't it a couple years? A couple years, two years. It was 2013. Yeah, it was 2013 okay. To 2015. To 2017. And, you like, know, if this set bombs, it's going to take them even longer. I would say, well, see, and that's part of the reason why I, I'm under the impression, I don't. Instead of just calling it Modern Masters 2, I think they called it 2015 edition, and I think they did it intentionally, with a reason. Oh, uh, so you're one of the people speculating that it, there's going to be a 2016. I'm I'm speculating it's going to be a 2016 because the only other thing that they use the years. The actual years in the year it is mm-hmm. for are the commander products in the fall. So my guess is you're going to have your normal sets that make up your standard rotation. Then in the spring, you will have Modern Masters X edition, whatever the year, and you're going to have um, Commander X edition in the fall. And I think you have two... There, Strange enough, I think they're for two different purposes. One, Modern Masters, of course, is to help the modern format. Mm-hmm. And Commander, actually, strangely enough, is to help the legacy format. Because all the in the past two years, uh, two years ago, in the Commander set, was True Name Nemesis, um, which is a legacy playable card. Mm-hmm. Um, this past year was Containment Priest, which was supposed to put in there to kind of help decks like Show and Tell. So that you just can't put Embrical in without recourse, essentially. Mm-hmm. So, I actually think they use the Commander sets a little more to help with Legacy. To help shake up Legacy meta, because meta, not every card right, that comes which, out... Right, which you explained. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think it would be pretty cool if they did do one every year. It would also explain a little bit why we switched down to fewer main sets coming in, because... The, uh, sorry... Uh, block sets? Standard yeah, sets? What like, do you call those? Well, say, well, say, they're, I guess they're called blocks, technically. But okay, it's then, a, yeah, it's, fewer block sets, because then you can... Uh, they actually, can put allocate the resources to get more shit printed, you know? Well, that and, and well, actually, they're actually going to... The way this new system's going to end up, they're actually going to end up with more blocks, because technically you're going to have the end part of a block at the beginning of the year, a whole block in the middle, 
and the start of the next block at the end of the year. Yeah. So technically you're getting through three blocks, but there's no core set anymore. There's no after Magic Origins. There's nothing else. Well, to... right. There's more blocks in standard. I was saying they're printing less. That's oh, yeah, what I was less. pointing out is if yeah, they're printing right. less, they if maybe they're taking that money and they're putting it straight into modern masters coming out every year. I was saying, and I mean, I, I, I've heard two prevailing theories. I don't know if this is accurate, but I, I've heard either A, Modern Masters is going to be a yearly thing, which I think would be awesome. Uh, the other thing is Modern Masters will rotate with Conspiracy. I personally didn't think Conspiracy was good enough to warrant another Conspiracy. I mean, it was a fun draft set, but it's nothing... It sells really well, people really loved it, and as long as people love it and they buy it, they're going to make it. As like, but I thought it was a very, it was a unique draft format. But it's, I mean, they didn't even do like a Grand Prix conspiracy, whatever thing. It was just a kind of, kind of a fun, more casually. Well, mind. no, it doesn't. It doesn't sit well with a Grand Prix. It's not made for that kind of shit. It's no. It's like, yeah. Four, and that's, four, I yeah. knew. God, how many times did we draft conspiracy? We drafted conspiracy since it came out six times. That means one of my friends went out and bought a whole fucking box of conspiracy. And we just went and we drafted it. I was like, and but I think, I've never seen that happen with anything else. But people had so much fun drafting conspiracy. Well, see, and I think, well, I think that's, and a lot of people are going to say the exact same thing about Modern Masters. Now, admittedly, they sort but it's of too expensive. They, they sort of to price draft. themselves. Out, they sort of price themselves out of that, which is part of the reason why I took out all my good rares out of my box of Modern Masters and put in a bunch of crappy rares. Probably, yeah. Storm. So that way, if someone down the road says, "Hey," Does anybody want to draw Modern Masters? I can be like, yeah, sure, here you go. Don't even have to pay for it. Right here. Just give me all the cards back at the end. It's like, not that there's any cards that are expensive in there. It's like, and I, I think that's fine. But, I mean, I think, it's, see, it's almost the opposite with me because I think I drafted, I've probably drafted Modern Masters 2015 probably seven times between paper and online. Yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't pay that kind of money. Yeah, that's not a like, thing, and that's that's well, the like, problem with drafting Modern Masters. Is I agree, Modern Masters is amazing to draft. I've only gotten a chance to draft it once because somebody bought a box and said, "Let's draft this." But most people can't fucking afford that, and that's right. why Conspiracy is going to be more popular for Wizards. More people can afford it. It's like, yeah, oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. It's like, and so I, I can either see them alternating Modern Masters and Conspiracy though that really makes the 2015 edition I don't know why they just didn't call it Modern Masters 2 but that's neither here nor there because um, I guess they can just call Conspiracy next year Conspiracy 2016 edition and just kind of flip flop the two it could yeah but I, I'm, I'm saying I would not be surprised if next year we're talking about Modern Masters 2016 edition it's like just to have one format one, one set every year basically specifically dedicated to modern and have one set that's sort of quote unquote dedicated to legacy sort of by, yeah by kind of odd terminology I guess is probably the best way to print it um so I, I I think it's possible but either way I mean I would be happy with another conspiracy set I would definitely not mind them reprinting Dak Faden because you want to talk about an expensive foil um yeah. Deck Fade would Deck Fade foil I think is up to three hundred something. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I definitely I definitely not would not object to more deck fade. So Well we see what they do and what they come up with and that's gonna be the end of episode nine. Yep. So thanks Again. for sticking with us guys. Yep. And hey, you know what next episode we become a legitimate podcast. Yay! Sort of, because we're, like, missing an episode, but whatever. Okay, all right, so we're one short. But <laughs> it's episode, we recorded episode eight. You just have to trust we us. It was did. Great. It was a it was good great. episode. It was a good talk about Gabby Sparks article. Oh, oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Get back to Modern Masters one other second. Um, uh, I noticed that during the weekend they were they, – I think, actually, Watsi was taking a legitimate – opportunity to try to showcase more women and magic this weekend between really? the between the in video segments between the rounds uh, i know they had gabby uh, sparts multiple times on day one and feature match camera feature match yeah. area i don't know if it was on purpose or if it was you know 
kind of just the way the ebb and the flow, but that was awesome. I'd love to see it. Do more. Hopefully Wizards. they do. We'll see. Huh? Hopefully they do. We will see. Hopefully. Hopefully. It's like, um, I heard, I heard other people talking about it. I mean, they really, they really kind of went the whole gambit, uh, this past weekend. I mean, they really made it a whole celebration of magic. They covered people getting married at Grand Prix Las Vegas. That was epic! Who got, uh, who got married, who got first met through, uh, magic. Um, uh, I saw they had, uh, uh, a transgender judge on. Um, she actually mentioned, uh, Aaron Campbell, who we had on the show, <laughs> which was awesome. Um, and I talked about different people traveling, you know, but there's one person who lives in Europe that actually went to Grand Prix Las Vegas. Really? Just because he wanted to be part of the big record breaking number. So I thought that was cool. Um, so they really kind of focused on kind of the diversity of magic, which is really great. Well, I hope they keep it up. We'll I hope they see too. at the next one. And uh, we will talk to you guys in a couple weeks. Bye. I, say, I well, probably want to go through the outro stuff. Outro oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Outro He's stuff. Like, okay, like, we yeah. lied to you. We're not leaving yet. Not yet. It's like, you got, you got to forgive us. We've been out for a while. We forget this. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I think I've, got, I've caught the plague con. So that's not oh. helping. All right, so we are on Twitter. I am Janelle5, J-N-A-E-L-L-E, and the number five. You can follow me to find out about my QA wars at work, what else I'm doing, whether I might be blogging, I might be doing other podcasts, whatever the fuck I happen to be up to. Um, and the show's podcast is AWC pod at AWC podcast. And then Will's got his own Twitter because he's a hip I, like that. I am at Red Hawk Will. Um, you can also email the show at AWC podcast at gmail.com. I will admit we did not look at it. So forgive we, us. We did. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, well, if we have anything, we'll hit it next time. Um, then um, also you can support the show. Uh, we're actually located several different places. Um, you know, you want to go through SoundCloud, Stitcher, and YouTube? Yeah, you can iTunes. listen to us on SoundCloud, and if you are listening right now, give us a like and a repost. Uh, if you're listening on Stitcher or you want to listen on Stitcher, we are there. If you want to give us a hand, you give us a thumbs up there, and that gets more people to listen to the show. Then we are on YouTube, so comment if that's where you're watching us. Give us a like. You totally know my failures at pit getting the pictures up are awesome so you know subscribe all that shit or something um we're also on itunes if you give us enough five star reviews and that kind of shit we will read them eventually yes, absolutely as like and then the final way to support the show is through bolt snap bolt.net yes um uh actually the whole site sort of took a hiatus during the month of may to be honest but we are we are coming back uh you can find my blog there for some wealth also, they are starting a new contest now where if you comment on articles on the site, you could be entered to win things like, oh, I don't know, a Magic Origins fat pack, uh, other sort of sundry prizes, stuff like that. So cool. um, definitely go check it out. Um, they're definitely trying harder to get more people to comment on the site, comment on articles, stuff like that, kind of help build that community there. So definitely you can check that out. Um, you can also uh, support us financially through the Puka Trade link there. Um, uh, Puka Trade, as um, you may know, is a site to kind of help trade magic cards. They actually have a bunch of exciting stuff going on. I know probably since our last episode, I don't know if we talked about it, but they had a Kickstarter. They met their goal. Um, so they're going to start doing kind of cool things like you can change magic online cards into Puka points. Cool. Um, or you can start using Puka points to buy magic online cards if you want to try to get more into magic online and playing on there. Um, you can switch between the two pretty much freely. Uh, so they are working on all those things. So it's a very exciting time. So definitely use their referral link. Sign up through that. You'll be helping us. Uh, you'll be helping the show out financially doing that. And so that would be awesome. <laughs> so yeah, if you can help us out, we really appreciate it. We, we want a full time reward. Give us twelve thousand dollars. Actually, sorry, we're up to twelve thousand one hundred dollars. So I guess shit. technically we need twelve thousand two one hundred one dollars. Uh, sorry, a minimum is twelve thousand two hundred. We need twelve thousand two hundred dollars. What we would actually like to do is maybe buy some better recording software, maybe, you know, stuff like that. So sure. uh, get me um, Photoshop so I can stop using PowerPoint yep. to make Who's my that? pictures. Because that's you have no fucking clue how awful that is. 
Like, seriously, that's the worst. That's the... It's... It's like wanting steak and going to McDonald's. I say, yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe once we get past episode ten, we can start looking at maybe Patreon something. Maybe? I don't we'll know. We'll see. We will we'll see. see. We'll look uh, at that. I think it might be more than that, but we'll we'll talk about it. We'll figure out what's what. And yeah, for now, just do those things we ask: likes, thumbs up, comments, reviews. Fucking go to the site and sign up for Pika Puka Trade. Pika Trade, Pikachu. And with that, we're gone. Bye. <laughs>